my favorite childhood books was The Little Engine That Could, about a small locomotive that goes up a hill that larger engines have failed to climb. The little engine was able to do so because it said over and over, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Because it thought it could, it in fact became the little engine that could. I loved the little engine that could because it gave me confidence. That's probably the reason the story was told in the first place. It's a way to encourage children facing the big, confusing, grown-up dominated world. That may be part of the reason the story of Peter on the water is in Matthew's Gospel. The evangelist wanted to encourage the church and individual Christians to trust in the power of the Lord. Peter's walking on water was not Jesus' idea. It was Peter's. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you across the water. It's a rather peculiar request. Tell me to do the impossible. So Jesus tells him to go ahead and do the impossible. Come. And Peter does. He walks on water. Perhaps as he got out of the boat and stepped into the water, he was thinking, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. So long as he thought so, he could and did walk on the water. The problem came because when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. His, I think I can, became a sensible, I can't do this. So he started sinking and cried to the Lord to save him. Jesus did so, but at the same time he scolded Peter. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? But why should Peter not doubt? After all, people don't walk on water. One should not even try something so unrealistic. We are like Peter. We ask the Lord to have us do the impossible, to bring peace and justice, to forgive, to show the love of God to the world. And he says, go ahead. How realistic is that? History, reason, and our hearts tell us it's impossible. What cause have we to think that we can do the impossible? But what is impossible? It's impossible for a little engine to climb a big hill. It's impossible for a Galilean fisherman to walk on water. The writer Arthur C. Clarke said, if an elderly but distinguished scientist says that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. But if he says that it is impossible, he is very probably wrong. Clarke's comment is certainly true of other realms as well as of science. We decide ahead of time what is impossible and then fail to do what is actually possible. And yet, we have imitated Peter and asking the Lord to give us an impossible task. By accepting the title Christian, we say that we are willing, even anxious, to do the impossible. Of course, Peter did not walk on water through his own power, even if it was his own idea. It was Jesus responding to Peter's faith that kept him up. Peter's thought may have actually been, I think he can, I think he can, I think he can. Committing himself to Jesus enabled Peter not only to suggest and accept the Lord's call to come across the water, but to actually do so. When his faith faltered, he foundered. The Lord is willing to support us in doing the impossible. What we need is enough faith to enable us to step out of the security of the boat we call everyday sensible life. To love the world as God loves it, we need foolhardy courage. Peter starts his request by saying, Lord, if it is you, if Jesus is the Lord, the presence of God among us, then we, like Peter, should clamor to do the impossible. Does the world seethe with resentment and bitterness? Command me to forgive. Does the world suffer injustice? Command me to be a peacemaker. Does the world stagger under the weight of hopelessness? Command me to preach the gospel. All I need is confidence that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Then my motto becomes, I think I can because I know he can. 
and the world will see me do the impossible. I will be the little Christian that could. Thank mm -hmm. you.